Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another NICU video. In today's video, I'm gonna cover a lot of the common equipment you might hear us talk about or use in the NICU. This video is kind of for those parents who might have a baby in the NICU who are hearing all these terms but can't quite remember what they are or what they do. Or again, for those healthcare professionals and nurses who might be interested in the NICU. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know in my last one I covered basic NICU equipment. So this is the equipment that you would see on any baby no matter what their diagnosis is. So this is gonna be your monitor which looks at baby's heart rate and rhythm. It's gonna tell us baby's respiratory rate, their oxygen level, as well as their blood pressure. This again is equipment you're gonna see on any baby no matter what they're there for. Other things you might see are gonna be types of IVs. Now we have a regular IV, which I'm sure most people know what that is. So it's just a little catheter that we insert. Um, we can put IVs in baby's hands and their feet, um, their arms, their legs, and even in their scalps. I know the scalp is a particularly scary place for parents to see their baby have an IV, um, but it actually can be one of the best places. Um, it kind of is out of the way. The baby doesn't know it's there. Uh, the baby's hands are free for that self-soothing, even in premature infants. They kind of like to have their hands near their face. Um, so with an IV in the scalp, while it may look very scary, it can actually be one of the better spots. Just a little tidbit again on scalp IVs. I know a lot of parents are scared of those because, well, what if it causes brain damage? It's nowhere near your baby's brain. Your baby's brain is covered by their skull, so that protects it. So the IV is just like an IV you would see anywhere else. Um, it just goes into a vein just right under the skin. So a very safe and a very good place for an IV. So those are what we call peripheral IVs. Another line you might hear in the NICU is gonna be a UVC or a UAC. Now a UVC is an umbilical vein catheter. So when a baby is born, they are attached to the placenta and mom by their umbilical cord. We cut this at birth and we'll leave just a little bit remaining. We, the umbilical cord has one vein and two arteries. So we're actually able to put a little silicone or plastic tube into that vein and we can administer fluids and medications through it. You might see a UAC as well, an umbilical artery catheter. So the umbilical cord also has two arteries in it. So with this, again, we're able to put a small plastic tube inside the artery and we can measure baby's blood pressure this way. We typically do this on our smaller premature infants or our really sick term infants. So for those babies, we want to be able to monitor their blood pressure continuously rather than using a blood pressure cuff. A blood pressure cuff is great. It's a great way to measure blood pressure, but this is a little bit more accurate usually. Um, and on some of our smaller babies, it can be hard for the blood pressure cuff to even detect a blood pressure if they're really, really sick or if they're really, really small. So a UAC or umbilical artery catheter is a great way for us to do that. Another line you might see in the NICU is called a PIC line. A PIC line stands for peripherally inserted central catheter. So this line is inserted by someone who is specially trained to do this. Um, I know in my hospitals, nurses do this. Sometimes in other hospitals, you might see a nurse practitioner or even a doctor put this in. Um, this is something that lasts a lot longer than what we would normally use, which would be an IV. With a PIC line, that can stay in for weeks, even months at a time, whereas your regular IV is only gonna last a couple of days, sometimes only a couple of hours in babies. So PIC lines are great for those babies who are gonna need long-term IV fluid care or long-term antibiotics. The main difference between an IV and a PIC line obviously is the amount of time they can stay in, but also where it is in the body. The peripheral IV, our regular IV, is a small catheter that goes in, whereas the PIC line is much longer. The line actually goes into a larger vein near the heart. These lines have to be checked by x-ray, so we actually take an x-ray to see where the line ends. So where does it go in the body? That's really important for monitoring, making sure it's in the right place. The next group of equipment is gonna be respiratory equipment. This is probably the largest group of equipment that we have in the NICU. We have different modalities starting from low support all the way up to full support. So the first of those is gonna be high flow oxygen. So we give this with a nasal cannula, which is usually just two small little prongs that sit in the baby's nose. This is gonna be for those babies who don't need a ton of support. They just need a little extra flow to help them maintain their oxygen saturations. Um, in the NICU that I work in, we give this anywhere from two to four liters. We're able to humidify it. so. 
It makes it a lot more comfortable for baby to breathe in, as well as we put it on what's called a blender. So we're able to control exactly or approximately the amount that baby is getting. So if baby needs 25%, we can give that. If baby needs 27%, we can give that. Or even all the way up to 100, but typically you're not gonna see that because if they need that much oxygen, they're probably gonna need a whole different type of support. But that is the lowest mode is gonna be a nasal cannula or high flow oxygen. The next modality of respiratory equipment is gonna be CPAP. In the NICU I work in, we use what's called bubble CPAP. So CPAP stands for continuous positive airway pressure. The analogy I typically give to my parents is gonna be that of a sleep apnea machine. Most of us know someone who uses a sleep apnea machine and CPAP in the NICU works similar to this. We use either nasal prongs or a mask, usually both, and we actually switch them out every couple of hours and this is just to prevent skin breakdown on the baby nose, but we use that to give a continuous amount of pressure to help keep those tiny lung sacs open. So these babies are breathing on their own. They're not going to need any assistance with that, but they just need that little bit of pressure to help keep those lung sacs open in between breaths. So it's very common, especially in your premature infants, that those little lung sacs are going to collapse just because baby's not quite big enough or not quite able to keep those lung sacs filled. So that's what CPAP does. Again, we're able to control the amount of oxygen that baby is getting um, with the blender. So we can get, you know, 24% all the way again up to 100%. Before I go any further with the respiratory equipment, I do wanna do a little disclaimer. I am a nurse, so I explained this um, based on my knowledge as a nurse. I am not a respiratory therapist, obviously. So if you are a respiratory therapist watching this, please don't shame me. I'm just explaining the best way that I can. Um, and the way that I explain this to parents just in an easy way for them to understand. The next modality of respiratory equipment I wanna talk about is called NAVA. Now this is kind of a newer modality, so I know a lot of NICUs aren't using it, but it's something that we do use in the NICU that I work in. NAVA stands for Neurally Adjusted Ventilatory Assist. So what that means in basic terms is we insert a catheter um, that's a little sensor and we insert it into the stomach, similar to an NG or an OG tube and it actually measures the amount of electrical activity from the diaphragm. What that means is this machine is gonna pick up what baby's doing, and if baby needs a little extra help with a little push of pressure, a push of a breath, it'll do that, but it measures based on baby's needs. So we have invasive and non-invasive. Non-invasive means it's gonna have those prongs or masks similar to the CPAP I talked about, or if they need invasive, they can actually intubate it and the machine works the same way. The reason you might see us use NAVA is if baby is having you know, a lot of apnea or a lot of those spells where baby is not breathing. So they are gonna stop breathing for several seconds at a time. This might be an indication to use NAVA. So if you have a baby on bubble CPAP and they're doing okay, but then they start having these spells where they're just continuously stopping those breaths or they're continuously holding their breath, um, but they don't need to be intubated, you might try NAVA to help with that. So it'll actually push a breath in if the baby does have one of those apnea spells. Again, that is just a basic um, definition of NAVA. There's so much more science behind it. It is great um, respiratory equipment, but it is kind of hard to understand. So that is the easiest way for me to try to help people understand what NAVA does um, and why we use it. The next and most invasive respiratory modality is going to be a ventilator. So what a ventilator does, the easiest way to say that is it breathes for your baby. So we insert a tube into the baby's mouth or nose, into their airway, um, and we put them on this machine and it breathes for them. With the machine, we're able to set how fast we give breaths, the amount of pressure, and the amount of oxygen that we give them based on what baby is telling us it needs. So if baby has low oxygen levels, we can increase the amount of support with the amount of oxygen, with the amount of breaths, or the amount of pressure that we set the machine to give. Another type of ventilator you might hear us use or talk about in the NICU is called an oscillator. So with your conventional ventilator, we set the amount of breaths baby gets. It inflates and deflates the lungs, just like how you and I breathe. Some babies really can't tolerate that though, so they need a set amount of pressure in their lungs at all times to keep those tiny air-filled sacs called alveoli open. Open. And this is kind of what we do with the oscillator. We set that amount of pressure so it keeps those lungs open and we kind of vibrate 
breaths in between going up and below that. So they're not ever going to get less than that mean pressure, but they are sometimes going to go above that. So this is for those really, really sick babies who need that highest level or most amount of support that we can give. I know that's a ton of respiratory equipment and there's probably even more out there. These are just the big ones that we use in the NICU that I work in. Um, again, a lot of information and I'm not a respiratory therapist like I've said a couple of times, so I just explained that the best way that I can. The next set of equipment is gonna be baby beds. So we have incubators in the NICU as well as what we call radiant warmers and then lastly an open crib. So the incubator that I use in the NICU that I work in is gonna be the giraffe omni bed. This is the Cadillac or what I consider the Cadillac of incubators. So this incubator has tons of functions including um, we can set humidity and temperature, so we try to mimic the womb as much as possible. So for our teeny tiny premature babies, we want to make that a very moist and humid environment to try to help keep their skin from drying out. We also set the temperature, so we actually connect a probe to the baby, the bed reads the baby's temperature, and based on whatever we put in as that set temperature, it will adjust the heat accordingly. This bed also has a scale in it, so I'm able to weigh baby right there in their bed. I don't have to take them out to weigh them. And then if you, um, in case you didn't know, we weigh babies typically every day, um, unless baby can't tolerate being weighed. And we weigh them so frequently because their weights do change frequently, and all of their medications and nutrients and food is based on weight. So we do everything in the NICU based on their weight. So it's really important that we get those accurate weights pretty, pretty consistently. The bed also has some other functions. It has a timer, so if you're doing something invasive and you need a timer, you can time yourself. Um, it looks like a little box, and I'll insert a picture here just to kind of just show you what I'm trying to describe. Um, tons of other functions. Um, I can lift the high of the bed, high or low. I can actually open the whole thing up if I really need to get in there and do some hands-on with the baby. If I don't need to quite open it up that much, we have little portholes where I can reach my hands in, um, so you're, decreasing that amount of heat loss and humidity loss that you have when you you know open the whole bed. So with the portholes, that's typically how I'm gonna change a diaper, check a temperature. For my normal hands-on, I'm gonna always use the portholes instead of opening up the bed. The next level of bed, I guess, that we have in the NICU is called a radiant warmer. This is gonna be for the late preterm babies and bigger babies. Um, it's not enclosed like the incubator I was talking about before, but it's still able to monitor and give heat based on baby's needs. So similar to the probe that we use in the incubator, we hook this to the baby, the bed reads that temperature and puts out heat or takes away heat based on that number. So this is for, again, those bigger babies that still need um, heat and, and help with that, but they don't need a full enclosure. The last and least, I guess, invasive type of baby bed is just gonna be a regular old crib. So babies graduate to that and then they stay in that until they go home. So small babies, premature babies, are gonna usually start out in that giraffe or incubator. They're gonna move their way up. Um, sometimes we go to a radiant warmer and then sometimes if they've you know, gained the appropriate amount of weight and they're maintaining their temperature pretty much on their own, we will go ahead and just put them in an open crib. I know once baby gets to an open crib, this is a huge milestone for those parents. It kind of is a little bit normal. It looks like a normal crib that a baby out on the floor would be in. So this is a huge milestone for any baby who's been in the NICU for any length of time. The last little piece of equipment I want to talk about is phototherapy. Um, this is one we see a lot, and in my last video I talked about this. So when a baby has certain levels of jaundice or that yellowing of the skin where they need treatment, we're going to put them under phototherapy. So this is a little light bank. Again, I'll put a picture somewhere over here so you can see what I'm talking about, but it emits light um, that helps break down those old red blood cells that are in making the skin turn yellow. So it looks like a little tanning bed. Baby wears some really cool sunglasses to protect their eyes, but this is something we use all the time in the NICU. I would say almost every premature baby is gonna be treated for jaundice at least once, um, and those bigger babies who have higher levels that need to be treated are gonna use the same type of equipment. I know that was a ton of information, but this is just some of the basic equipment that we use in my NICU and in most NICUs, so I hope it was a little bit helpful, maybe in just you know helping describe some of the equipment that you as a parent might have heard or you as a, a student or a nurse might have heard of and just kind of how we use it in the NICU. So, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, drop a comment down below, and have a great day.